How to make a gourd water bottle. Okay, beautiful November day uh, up in the 60s after a very cold rainy morning. We're going to come out here and work on making our gourd water bottle. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut this, uh, this little stem piece off. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cork and I'm going to place it here because I have a rough idea. This is just a wine cork. Now you could just as easily make your cork out of wood. You could carve yourself a cork, whatever you want. Uh, but I'm going to take this and I'm just going to make a line so I get a rough idea. Now I'm going to take my uh, my knife here. I'm just going to place it here. I'm just going to drill a hole for my cork. Don't rush it. Take your time. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy the scenery. All things may be done in Christ. And so one thing people don't understand is that when we say the peace of Christ, we don't mean peace as in lack of war. We mean peacefulness. Christ is the quiet hub around which the entire universe turns. He is steady. He is the Logos. And so when all the world is turmoil, then we step into his presence and there is stillness. <laughs> Coming along. Could we speed this up with power tools? Yeah, we could speed it up with power tools, but why? Look at that sky. Just sit here and enjoy the ride. Now I'm going to get a piece of sandpaper and wrap it around this uh, this dowel. And this will allow me to uh, sand this thing a little smoother. And doing that will help it. Now, I don't want to take it out to the full diameter of the cork. I like it being a little too, little too small right now because I'm afraid that I'm, I'm going to, I'm afraid I'm going to widen the hole a little bit anyway as I begin to remove all the stuff on the inside. Now I can't show it to you, but if you were able to see in there, you'd be able to see that there's all kinds of stuff sticking to the inside of this, of this uh, shelf. There's seeds in here and all kinds of stuff, and we're going to save those seeds. Seeds. You're going to think you're done, but you're not done.
Now, some of the stuff that's in here is very papery. I want you to see this. And so you have to kind of break it up. And so you see it coming out here. It's like in sheets. So it's not all dusty. This is the interior of the, it's almost like the inside of a pumpkin. And so you really have to get in there and you get a longer stick and you have to get in. And when you think you're done, you're not done. You got to keep going. And a lot of it is stuck right here on the inside right here. And so you have to kind of get in there and do this to kind of rub that off. I've been out this about 15 minutes. Now your instinct's going to be to want to rinse it out. Don't rinse it out. By the way, that's how much stuff came out of this one little gourd. Okay? Because you want it to be dry. You're going to put beeswax on the inside and you don't want to inhibit the beeswax to stick to and or coat and coat the inside of the gourd. Now while you have the sandpaper out, you might give this a little sanding. Now I'm going to put this on a flat surface and I'm going to sand the top of this thing flat. Not a lot, just a little bit. You see the difference? See? Yep. So if it's if it's too sharp of an edge, it's prone to breaking off. It's not quite big enough yet. Perfect. That's a satisfying sound. Now get yourself a fire going. Um, I like to do this outside because uh, you don't want, uh, if you're working with paraffin or beeswax or something like that, you don't want to have uh, anything reach flashpoint and catch your house on fire. So you probably want to work outside. Now if you have an old pan or an old pot, you can work with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a little cup to melt it in. I'm going to take a, a coat hanger and then what I'm going to do is uh, bend this cup so that it has a spigot on it and I'll take this pair of pliers and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it like that and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to bend it like that and I'm going to make a little pour spot spout in this thing. There you go. I'm going to make myself a nice long handle. Got this basically to the shape. Now I'm going to wind this thing up a little bit. Now that I've got it on, I'm going to give it another twist, get it real tight so it doesn't move nice and sturdy. Now I've got the handle roughly made here. Now obviously you can make yourself a way better cup than this. I didn't bother or you could just simply use an old pan from the stove. Uh, but you can really wear out some pans cooking and doing things like this. 
these are uh, beeswax pearls. As you can see, it's getting pretty thick. You see it's sitting up like butter. Um, you know, again, you can use paraffin, but uh, you definitely don't want to burn your house down. So uh, I advise using caution and working outdoors. Okay, I have 100% melted wax and I'm going to pour this well away from my body into this gourd with my gloves on Now I want to make sure it's fully coated on the inside, but not too thick. So I'm going to do it again. While you have your beeswax out and it's melted, then with your gloves on, just get a little rag and just wipe some of that beeswax into the surface. And I don't know if you can see this, but it just adds a little bit of a uh, shine to it and it makes it a little more resilient, um, just like any kind of wax would. Now maybe some other time I'll show you how, I'm, how I wove this, uh, this little um, holder for it. Maybe that, that'll be a fun video another time. Uh, it's a very useful weaving technique. It's one of the most basic weaving techniques there is. So anyway, there is a gourd water bottle. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in learning more about primitive skills, then I encourage you to sign up for the Heritage Arts Wildwood Outdoor Skills Program. Learn wilderness skills and nature appreciation at your own pace. And then maybe earn a colored rank bandana to signify your advancement. All totally free because Heritage Arts Incorporated is a 501c3 nonprofit charitable education corporation. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe to the YouTube channel because we're a nonprofit and we'd like to get a thousand subscribers so that we can monetize the channel. Thanks again for watching. Take care and God bless.